Hi, I'm Gloria Cabral. Welcome to my home for the love of cooking. Come on in. I'm Gloria Cabral and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to talk about cleaning and soap. Soap making, art that has been done for years and years by our grandparents, great grandparents. And what is soap? Soap is fat. So this, what we'll do today is talk about melt and pour soaps, which is made from glycerin. And this is what you see a lot of times, the cute little soaps you can buy at the store or ducks and whatever else. These are snowflakes. I'm going to show you several things to do with the melt and pour soaps. Uh, I took a class from my very good friend Marla and I, I fell in love with making soap. And then later I'll talk about different types of soaps and different types of ways to make them. Well, melt and pour is basically a big block of glycerin. We have different types. This is honey based, olive oil based, goat uh, milk based. And what we have to remember with soap, what we put on our skin goes into our skin. So if we're putting a lot of chemicals, they're going into it, hand antiseptics, what that does is put it going into our body and making our body resistant of things. So you wanna put the best of on your skin because it's into it. Just like when you eat, you eat good food because that's in your body, good soap will be in also for your body. Melt and pour soaps are great because all you're doing is basically what I'm telling you is melting and pouring it. You choose a base you want and you can add it, different things to decorate. So what I'm doing is I just melt out a whole bunch of these little blocks and I put them in, I have right now I have some hot uh, soap already melting and I try to keep it around 130 degrees. I work in small batches which is nice. So this batch here I'm going to make some snowflakes very, very simple. I'll do three or four different types of things we can do with it. And what I suggest, if you're really interested in doing it, take a class. There are local class soap makers, uh, the soap guilds. Just Google it online and you will see all these different ways to learn how to make different ways of working with a melt and pour. All right, let's see. What I do is I start off with one pound of, um, you know, the melt and pour soap. And this one's very simple. Make sure you have a good scale. You can have a digital or electronic scale. And I pour out just what I need. Uh, carefully, carefully, carefully. And you can always adjust, which is nice with this. Spend the money and buy yourself a real nice scale because you can use it for all different types of things. What's nice about melt and pour, I can use things in the kitchen. If I do different soaps like cold process, um, I can't. I have to work with, uh, just special products or special dishes or everything else I have. Okay, I poured out one pound of uh, just the clear melt and pour, and they come in different ones. You can get one with opaque, it means not a see-through. We're gonna make this opaque. So they have specific recipes for this, and it's very simple. You put a measurement of whatever extract, and since I'm doing snowflakes, I'm gonna do peppermint because I love peppermint, and I think that's a good time for the holidays. If I do this at different times of the year, uh, later I'll show you some warm baby powder for showers. I've done these for weddings also. So I put a, the fragrance in it, and you have to make sure it's about 130 degrees, which is probably about that right now. And when I do, I can, I can just feel with my hand. Remember, your body is your temperature. I, can, I have thermometers and everything else, which I'll use at different times, but it's 98.6. So <laughs> if it's really hot, like I'm washing my hands, I figure maybe that's 150, 160, 180. This is warm, but you can still see steam because it's cool in my kitchen. Um, that's about 130 degrees. Where I want it to be opaque and kind of see-through, I add white white, which you can get white white, and it's titanium dioxide, and I can just add a little bit at a time to see how opaque I can leave it marbled, but I, whew, you can smell the heat of that peppermint. It's really nice. So I want a white snowflake. I can make them different colors, and I'll show you swirling and different techniques. See, so we have a nice pretty snowflake. Mix that in. All the ingredients I'm buying are uh, soap safe, so you can buy them at different companies online. 
Uh, I work with one specific company so I can get all my different things. Uh, this is sparkles, which every little, mostly every kid and especially every girl loves sparkles in there. Uh, soap and sparkles and everything. I know my niece does. I add sparkles to my soap base. So far so good, right? Pretty easy. And what will happen, it will be, it'll settle to, so I'll have more of my sparkles up front when I put this in there. See how easy that is? Let's mix it in. Nice and smooth. And a lot of the molds you buy are specific. These are about three to four ounces, so I figure I did one pound. I'm gonna to try to get four, four bars or five bars. I'll see what I get out of it, so I'll know how many ounces are in there. So when I sell it, everything's the same. Let's pour that in carefully. This is a great project to do with children. Uh, they can make their f party favors, you know. Not everything has to evolve around food and you know sweets. Let's do something fun. We used to always do different projects uh, with the kids. We've done tie-dye t-shirts. I think I'll get about five out of this one pound. See, look at that. Let's make them all even. This way, like I said, it's just like having kids. Everybody gets the same amount. Okay. I will take a little bit more, sprinkle a little bit of glitter on top. And if you get all little air bubbles on it, the best thing to do is take a little bit of alcohol, just plain rubbing alcohol, put it in a spray bottle, and that helps with the bubbles. And we'll use the alcohol in several different layers uh, when we're doing different things. Now I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and I'll come back with a different type of this melt and pour. It's easy to melt this. If it gets too hot, a lot of times I just let it cool. I'll cover or not cover it so I can't use it. So I'm just gonna take some. How easy it is, let's microwave it. And when I microwave, you can put it on a lower power. I just put it in for about a minute for one pound. And then I adjust the time. So as that's cooking, I'm gonna say, hmm, what color do I want? And we're gonna do a little bit of marbling with different colors. So I chose a sweet orange essential oil and a fresh ginger lime, very citrusy. We're gonna work with orange. So when I buy uh, my colors, I try not to buy 1,500 different colors, every shade of the rainbow. I usually buy yellow, blue, red, and black, uh, unless I'm gonna make it a lot of one color because they all make the rainbow colors. So I have red, I have Santa red and lemon yellow. We're gonna to mix together. But this one I said, oh, this will be fun for kids. Orange, nice, when you get up in the morning, you'll have that nice, sweet smell of everything. So I'm gonna add candy sprinkles. If it's really hot, the sprinkles will melt. So you try to watch your temperature, and I even try to keep it a little bit lower than normal. And I'm gonna add a little bit of color like I did here. Whatever my first color is, I will put a lot more of it. I can add a little bit of sparkle to it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of the white white to make it more of the opaque color. See, it's, it's almost all the way melted, so I know how it's pretty hot. It's melting slowly. I'll just move this around. This is important. This is just like if you ever try melting chocolate. You should only melt it two-thirds of the way and let the residual heat. Because here is, it's probably, I'd say 120. Let me try my scale. I mean my thermometer. And keep a good thermometer. Probe thermometers are nice, and we've talked about that with different tools because it's away from, I'm not, my hand is not over something, chance of burning it. So I can look over here, and this is a perfect temperature, 129, but I still have this block. Oh, there it goes up, 154, 53. So that will be enough to dissolve this carefully. So it's a good thing you can make some, put it aside. And I only make about a pound at a time because I can make four blocks because these are four ounce containers. So this way I don't have a whole bunch. If I'm making a lot more, I just multiply. That's why math is so important in the whole, anything in the kitchen. So we're really not cooking food today, but we are cooking. And we'll talk about, you know, what I say is different types of soap. This is melt and pour. So while this is, I'll explain other ones. Cold process. Cold process is like when your grandmother used to make it, or some grandmothers would make, take the fat that they had in the house, and they would add the chemical sodium hydroxide, which is lye. Lye is the stuff that would clean pipes and do a lot of things. That creates a, a gelling, uh, gelling process called saponification. 
and I will show you some soaps later that I make with that. That you should definitely learn how to take a course or do different things. And uh, so we have been, you know, I've been playing with a lot of different types of uh, fats in that whole process. and. It's been a wonderful experience again because you're putting thing whatever you're putting on your skin is going into your skin. Right. Okay, we're about at the right temperature. It's about 130. What I'm going to do now is I want to put the scent in it. And like I said, I want a ginger lime orange scent. This is fun. And I always tell everybody it can be addicting because then you start seeing what's in the catalogs and different smells, different flavors, different ideas because they have so many fun things to do. Uh, just have to be careful on what you order because before you know it, like I did, you can spend a lot of money. So I think I started, I don't even want to know what I, my husband doesn't even want to know what I've spent yet. Luckily, it's been profitable and a lot of people are doing this and this is what I tell people, there's a lot of people that are making soap, melt and pours because they're very simple, uh, the cold process or hot process soaps uh, because they're very nice. But what the problem is, you have to look in your area to see who's selling it if you want to make it as a business. But if you want to just make it for fun and gifts, keep it the cost lower and it's a lot of fun. It doesn't cost too much to make a bar of soap, but you can sell them for a nice profit. Oh, that smells wonderful. Nice little citrus smell going on. And where I have orange and lime and lemon, I want to keep my colors in that same mode. <coughs> I can even pour just so they look, you know, very um, marbly like this. But like I said, I want a nice bright color. Oh, that's pretty. That'll be fun for the kids. We'll just put this over here. And these, like I said, he's about four ounces, so I'm just going to make enough. I'm putting a little bit of clear to give it a little bit of color. And I like the clear color of it. So you can put out as much or as little as you want. Those little clumps are just when it's starting to cool a little bit. I'll add my white white to it. And I'm going to add a little bit of spray. Remember between you're spraying your layers, you want to spray a little alcohol. It helps hold it in there, get the bubbles out. Put a little bit of my dust. This comes in gold and silver and bronze and orange and all different colors. This is one of my favorites. And I want to add enough of my white to make it opaque. Let's add a little bit more red. I can go back and forth in the microwave. This way it'll help if it's getting clumpy like this. I just zap it for a minute. Just watch the color back and forth. Yeah, get some yellow in there. That nice milky color. Let me just put it back for a second. And what's nice about this is cleanup. How hard is it to clean up soap? Scrape out the big pieces. I don't throw anything away. I'll put it in the refrigerator or freezer and I pull it out. I can always remelt it. And I throw it in the dishwasher. Just watch if you get too much soapy things in the dishwasher. Your dishwasher has a lot of soap. So I usually just throw a little hair conditioner in there so it doesn't build up on the soap. a nice soap. Let's add a little bit of, if you look here you'll see it's starting to get a little film. So I might pick, poke a few holes because I want my soap to go through. See it's already started to get a little hard. Let's throw in my sprinkles. Nah, let's do it easier than that. And this is just sugar. There's all kinds of ways to adding sugar to different things. I'll use sugar scrubs and I put this in a sugar scrub for your face which is really cool. The kids love it. See? So far it's not so hard is it? I will put that over there. It's cool in here so this what happens is it, it gets that thin layer. I can even just poke a little hole through there. And later you're going to see what this looks like. Because right now you can't see because it's so um, 
right? It's, it's just so upside down. But once we put this in, the best way I do it, I either put this in the freezer for 15 minutes or half an hour in the refrigerator. We have all the air bubbles. Take your alcohol. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it's a two-tone. So I can give it a little bit of look to it. I start playing around with this different ways. If I don't want to put flavor, smells or essential oils into it, I'll try different things. If I have a little bit like this left over, I put this in the refrigerator because I can cut this up, I can save it, I can remelt it, and I'll just write what flavor or smell and put them in a Ziploc bag. So if I have three or four different ones that are close, I can remelt them and use them again. Or I put them in a little, and I'll show you my soap socks later. Just little bits, because what do you do with all this little extra soap? Use it, you never throw it away because it's all good to use. So I'll put these in the refrigerator and we'll come back with the next one. Well, I've showed you how to melt in the microwave flavor or scent your soap. This one is called embedding and I just, embedding means put it inside. So there's different ways to embed, different ideas. What I did with this soap here, I have one, two, three, four, they're all about four ounce soap bars and I made a baby powder fresh. It's yummy, it's great for Easter time. Look at this, nice and easy for Easter. Embedding is when you add different things. This is one with a loofah sponge, so as it, you wash, it scrubs and it exfoliates at the same time. You can pour them out in sheets, all different sheets of different plain colors, because if you have too many smells, it's too a little crazy, and you can cut them out with cookie cutters and then put them into your soap. These were embedded with, um, rose petals, natural rose petals, but what happens is because of the heat, it tends to make it darker, and this is lavender. And I did it in a two-stage with a very clear, a little opaque white, and the smell of the soap behind it. One of the ones I did here is I poured out the colors I wanted. I just made plain colors, because I don't, like again, I might use these for different things. And I poured them at the bottom of a plastic cup. You can see the little recycling emblem. And I put them over a carrot grater. So I grated these different colors into here. And you choose whatever colors. I says, oh, I have a baby shower to go into. So that's why I decided, mmm, baby powder. I can give a half a dozen of these with some nice, uh, a, maybe a soap sock for the baby or a uh, some kind of different washcloths and towels. And it's something that's homemade. And homemade is always from the heart. So in this one, I said, all right, we'll look at over here. At the same time, I did, I cut out sheets of the different soaps in the different colors. I have black, I have yellow, orange, and this is where it's fun for the kids. So for the kids, what I do is I just pour a little bit in here first, and we're gonna do the two at the same time, so you're basically seeing it's all being in bed. So I put a little bit in here, just so it can stick to something. And you choose your colors. And when I'm doing the, the oval ones, I'm going from light to dark. Again, a little spray of alcohol. So I'll put my first color in first, my yellow. And that's setting up a little bit, and then I'm like, oh, what can I do? Again, I wanna see, this is a beautiful light green. It looks like sea glass. It doesn't really notice much in here, so maybe I'll put a couple of pieces, cause it's lighter. And maybe I'll add a yellow ring onto this. It's sticking to my next colors. Hmm, purple over here. This was a curl I did, and I used a carrot peeler with the soap, a little thin soap, so we just cut it in a carrot peeler. These are little cutouts, cookie cutouts. If I have stars and stripes or whatever else I can do, I can add that in there. Add a little bit more, and that's gonna kinda hold it in place. See? Not hard. This is easy enough. This, this will not burn the kids at the right temperature. So you can then, you know, do this with kids. Imagine if I had dinosaurs or little, you know, sometimes we'll put a little matchbox car in there so by the time they wash it. When I was younger, a few years ago, uh, we, at, we used to have little toys inside, but they was, there was no color so you never knew until you started getting to the bottom of the soap. And that was many, many, many years ago. So we would always like, be in anticipation of what the soap was, what's in it, different things like that. You try to pick out your colors. Let's put a curl in there. That kind of looks kind of interesting. And you can have all these like for the kids to play with and make their own soaps for a party favor. Hmm, a little orange in there, some green. Okay, spray. 
And if it starts getting thicker, I just have to put it in the microwave for a second. You know, just a few seconds just to keep it pourable. You don't want it too hot because if it's too hot, it will melt your soap in here. Then you're going to lose those pretty designs. My purple. Wait till later when we unmold all these soaps, you'll see all these wonderful things. And it didn't take long. Ah, there we go. We'll move this out of the way. I'm going to push all this down just a hair. Hmm. This needs some bright color in here. Put that in there. And maybe I want a little bit of color. I can just break this if it will break or I can cut it. See, it's very pliable. Add a little yellow for a little color in there and a little black. And these are one of a kind soaps. Nobody can say, oh, you have one mine. You have one like mine. You don't. It's all pretty easy. Let me just warm this up a second. When you just look at something like this, wow, and it's not complicated, so at home you can do this. I spent many years before I went back to school at home with my children till for 18 years I stayed home. And so I used to try to keep myself entertained uh, or the kids entertained with different things. When it came to the holidays and birthday, I always try to make sure I, I did extra jobs to uh, buy my husband gifts, not from the household money because that, that made it much more special. So, it's a, you know, it's it, you do with what you can. Oh, this one has a big chunk in there. That's okay, it's all soap. You do with what you can. If it has a little extra, we can always trim that off. And we try to make the best. At the same time, you learn a lot of different techniques. Any extra soap, I just usually grab a little cup. I can pour it right in here. And I can save that for something else. I'll just write on it, baby powder. And when I make some more of these soaps, I will have extra in there. See, very simple. And that's called embedding. That's really, really easy. We'll have, um, I'm gonna let this refrigerate and we'll come back with another one and you'll love this one. And the last thing we're gonna do is inserting. And inserting is wonderful. I did this for my sister's wedding. Uh, we put their little thank you and a blessing and we put them in the bar of soap and that was their thank you gifts. I did this for a dinner, uh, American Culinary Federation. We had a dinner so I made their soap with their logo and it smelt like wine. So what this is is rice paper and rice paper is used in cake decorating uh, that you can, you know, it's edible, I can eat this, it's nothing to it. You can buy dissolvable papers from these companies and so when it hits the water it will slowly dissolve. I just picked out different pictures of my friends, this little Ava and my niece and her friend Hannah and another friend that coming next week. So I figured Ooh, this would be a nice little gift I'll put on their bed with the, uh, for the couple so they can do this. I just put the paper through my printer after I figured out what size I wanted and we printed them out and we cut them. So now the first thing you have to do is put a thin layer of the clear because if you put any major color on it you're not going to see it. So as my clear has been sitting here I just move it around, give it a little scoop. My kitchen will be all nice and clean with all the soap around later. After I wash everything, I'll have fluff and little foam everywhere. I just put about a quarter of the way. I'll put the clear. There's no smell. There's no anything in this, so it's nice and easy. See? Just think of a special anniversary, birthday. And this is very big for weddings. Then I take the picture and what I want to do is make sure, give it a little squirt to get the air bubbles out. That's alcohol so that it won't affect your picture. Place the picture in and I want it to go into the clear. Just like that. I could put that in each one. And you want to move it to where you want, if it's going to be, wherever it stays, it's going to, it's going to, if you slide it now, you have control over it. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom because I'm going to put another color behind it. So you pick the appropriate color you want behind it. You can do marbling like we've done. You can do embedding. But I just want to make sure this is all there. And I like to give it just a minute because if I pour another color on top of it, it will mix uh, in the front. So I want to be able to have that clear in the front. Okay. 
pretty nice. This one I cut to just about fit. The other one's a little bit shorter. I can adjust it any way because remember, you are the creator. This is your part of you. All right, we'll let that sit for a little bit. I've already mixed my colors. I have a nice marble swirl. As you see, it's still a little thick here because I don't want it too hot so it won't melt the other one. I'll look to see if it's starting to get a little stiff there, a slight little skin before I pour one on top of the other. And I'm just gonna carefully pour because I don't want to get it all over the place. See? This will be very pretty when it's done, but I think I'm gonna let the other one sit for a little bit. Just enough to score a little skin so, if it, so it doesn't melt everywhere. What a pretty color. I'll do each one now. It looks like they're okay. Look at that. And it's very transparent, this color, so if I want to make it less transparent, all I have to do is add a little bit of the white white to this color. All right, that works out good. Let me get a little white white to make it less transparent. And I like the marbleized look, the marbleized design. It's very antique-y. <coughs> I can't wait to unmold these later. They're all sitting in my refrigerator. Luckily, I didn't go grocery shopping this week. <laughs> Mix the marble in there. You can pour it in if you want. I'm just slowly, so I can pour right in now. Bring a little bit more of the color, mix in the marbling. Sometimes you don't know what happens to them until you take it out. So later when I take it out, if I don't like something, I can always cut it up, use it for an embed, or that becomes the kid's bar of soap that you just put in the, not your, not your gift. There we go, right to the line. So I know that these are all four ounce bars of soap if I'm going to sell them. Make sure you label them correctly in the smells and so they know the difference of the different types of soaps. Now I have to get rid of my bubbles. A little squirt of alcohol. I'll let that set and refrigerate it. We'll be back in a little bit with all the different types of soaps and we'll go through each one and different things you can do. Now that we're back with all the different things, remember there's all different types of things in here and you're only limited by your imagination, which is an old saying which has a lot of meaning. What we did is we just, I just popped this out and what happened is, if you notice, not everything I do is perfect and we'll, I'm always told this, so this is one of the reasons why. I didn't let it get cold enough with my clear so the colors came underneath. I'm not worried about this, I usually make extras and what I would do is I'd put this back in my container remelt it and do it over again. So you just have to think ahead a little bit or what I always tell everybody is you must have more patience. So I did different soaps here and these are the ones with the candy and the orange. Look at, doesn't that look yummy? It looks almost like an orange creamsicle or parfait. These are some of the other ones I did like this is with the, the lavender and the flowers you have to remember with. Flowers, if they're a living thing and they've been dried, they still because of the heat will get darker. But the rose Here's the snowflakes, and I have more still in the freezer. These were made with tart pans, so I could just have just you know a little tart pan, a rubber mold that you can buy from the store, any of those little cupcake things, and you can make different things. You can make frosting on it by working with the uh, colder soaps and making different things on these things, adjust different things. Look how beautiful these came out, and these were the ones we did with all the little pieces. The most important thing with different um, with the melt and pour soaps is they need to be wrapped right away. They're very water based so they will dry out and split so you need to wrap them right away. So I use a very strong a tighter plastic wrap. And what I do is I put it right on top and I try to go right around each side nice and tight. And you lift it up just a little to make sure there's no wrinkles at the top. What a great gift for a kid's party. They made it. They can take home their gift. 
better than, oh, we don't want to give them candy and all these things, the little things that they'll never use, toys they throw away. They can use this because, you know, nothing better than a clean kid. You can take different things and just do them very simple. This one is, uh, I use coffee into it and I use as an exfoliant. Exfoliant takes off the extra layers of skin, coffee grounds. I've made them with different types of uh, things. You can use cornmeal and make a flavor that's good for the outdoors. So if you're in the garden, the cornmeal works to help clean the hands. So this is on the melt and pours. And what I was explaining is different types of soap or soap process. There's cold process, there's hot process, there's a cold hot process. So what I've gotten to do is cold process and that's taking different types of fats and every fat has some a value to it you know castor oil is good for lather cocoa butter is hardness and lather a lot of mine I use a lot of olive oil because olive oil is very conditioning and there's many different types of oils we can use or fats to create this and you learn by taking a class from a soap uh, maybe a soap maker or a soap guild learn to do these things uh, it's very caustic means, you know, because we're working with lies and everything else. But what you come out with is so amazing. Most of the soaps I make do not have uh, fragrances because I'm, again, I said you're putting it on your, your hand. So it'll be the natural fragrance, but I do have a, some that do. In the same marbling process, you can come out with the cold process. Here we have marbling and on these we have in beds. So there'll be little pieces and these will be fragrant. This one's peppermint and this one's called energy, which I really enjoy. Now I worked with a local beekeeper and she has honey and propolis and pollen, all these different things and a wax from her bees. So I take that and I, I melt down the wax. I add wax, I had, add her honey and her propolis to make um, this wonderful, absolutely wonderful bar. It's for anybody's skin because it is 80% uh, olive oil. So it's what they would consider a Castile soap. When you put this on, because of that and the wax, it gives it a nice coating. I would say it's great for babies, skin allergies, because there's really nothing in it but water, honey, the fats, and the lye. And the lye, which changes in the saponification after a month or two, it can be used, and it makes an incredible, incredible soap. I took some other ones here, and this, this line that I have of my foodie soaps, this one's a carrot cake, and it's made with carrot juice. It's made with dry carrots, because when I juice the carrots, I dry it. I add coconut, uh, pecan, and sometimes I'll add different flavor, uh, cinnamon. This one has cinnamon in it. There's no oils, essential oils, or anything else. It's all natural with what that is, and it smells wonderful. Uh, the strawberry, I use the strawberry seeds once I dry them, the strawberry as my exfoliant. This is one of my uh, real fun ones, it's chocolate. And chocolate has cocoa nibs and cocoa powder in it and melted chocolate to give it that, it smells like chocolate. It's a harder bar, it doesn't lather as much because of the what's in it, but I made it for the chocolate aspect of it. Uh, blueberry, and I have several other ones. Now this is my newest one, and we haven't wrapped it yet, it's just in the finishing stage. It's called bacon, maple bacon. And in this one I use bacon fat that's been cleaned, use the bacon water, and add maple syrup and uh, maple sugar. You have a slight smokiness, but when you wash your hands, it doesn't smell like bacon, which, you know, some people are like, oh, I would love to have this. Though it doesn't have the maple flavor, so the next batch will probably have a little bit of a maple extract to give you that morning refreshment. See how much fun this can be? And one of the many things of the different soaps here is a soap sock. And a soap sock is, what do you do with all the little pieces of soap? They go in the bottom of the tub, they get thrown out. What I usually do is I just put them in my soap sock. This is nice and soft and scrungy. It's very simple to make. All it is is baby yarn and you knit it, or you can crochet whatever you want. And you use it again as your exfoliant. When you scrub, it just makes a nice soft, uh, soft lather, it's soft on the kids, soft for everybody, and it's spoiling yourself. So we've made several soap socks in different colors, and we have them in all the bathrooms. You can use it in the kitchen, wherever you want. When there's no more soap, throw it in the wash machine, or just keep adding soap. But I usually take, I can even put one whole bar in here and use that there. So this way I know where my bar of soap is, and I hang it so it doesn't end up um, on the floor. Because if you leave soap in the water, it'll just melt on you. How much fun this can be? Once you start doing this, you're gonna fall in love with soap making. Just think what you put into your body stays in, what you put on top, it's gonna to go in. So you want a healthy body, a healthy family, and a healthy life. You know, we do this, I say it all the time, we do it for our friends, our family, and the love of cooking. 
So have a clean day. We'll see you later.